everyone, my name is Katrina and today I have a very exciting video for you. Basically I'm going to be sharing with you an interview that I hosted with author Jay Kristoff when he was in Sydney for his lifelike tour and also sharing a bit of footage that I took from not only the official launch in Sydney but also from our Name of the Book Club meeting with Jay Kristoff. I was originally going to post these as separate videos but I didn't get as much footage of the book club meeting and the launch as I'd wanted to because I was just having too much fun and forgot to vlog <laughs> in the moment. So I thought I would just put these two videos for you together so you can get kind of a two-in-one deal. Let's jump into the interview. Hello everybody, my name's Katrina and today I have a very special guest author, Jay Kristoff. He is the author of the Lotus War series, the Nevernight Chronicle, co-author of the Illuminate Files, and author of the Lifelike series. Lifelike is described right on the cover. It says, it's Romeo and Juliet meets Mad Max meets X-Men with a little bit of Blade Runner cheering from the sidelines, yeah. which from the get-go sounds pretty epic. But could you tell us a little bit more about what to expect and what the story is about? It is set in a post-collapse United States, probably 70, 80 years from now. There's been a nuclear war, uh, climate change is running rampant, and there has been a series of robotic technologies developed that culminated in androids, which are called lifelikes. But something happened in the past and they have subsequently been outlawed. And the story centers around a girl called Eve, who's a bit of a mechanical genius tech whiz kid, and she finds the ruins of one of these lifelikes on the scrap heap where she lives and shenanigans ensue. Lots and lots of shenanigans. Many, many shenanigans. <laughs> um, another question I have is how are you awake and functioning right now? Because you seem to have be like in the process of writing so many books, you're publishing a lot, you're like touring around Australia and America. Like how, how are you balancing things? The <laughs> less smart alecky answer is that I have started drinking coffee. <laughs> I, stopped, I stopped drinking Red Bull and I started drinking coffee. Uh, Mm -hmm. The smart ass answer that I give is that I actually have four other J's locked in a basement under my house and this J is actually not the J that writes any of it. Oh. There's alternate reality J's that are kept chained up to laptop computers in my basement and they're the ones that produce all the work and I'm the one who gets to have all the fun and go touring Lucky around you. and meet like lovely readers. But yeah. <laughs> I do it as a job. So yeah. I get up at 8 o'clock in the morning, by 9 o'clock I'm sitting in front of a computer and I write until 5, 6 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, I try and do 3,000 words a day, but oftentimes I get more because I work at eight hours a day. So if you write 3,000 words a day every day, you're going to wind up with a book pretty soon. In three, four months, you'll have a YA length novel. So I do remember following along with your kind of foray into drinking coffee at the start. You were just like, what is this shit? I mean, it was awful. <laughs> it tastes horrible. Um, but I was like an infant and I had yeah. resisted coffee for so long and I was drinking <laughs> just way too much Red Bull. I would yeah. have stacks and stacks oh of empty gosh. cans in my house. Eventually I decided to be a grown-up about it, so my friend printed me out this kind of helpful color-coded chart of all the different oh kinds gosh. of coffee you could get. <laughs> and I would walk down to the corner store every day with my chart and order that one, and eventually I discovered one that I oh. kind of liked, and now I can't not have it. How deeply do you plan your novel? Like, do you do much outlining beforehand? Just because there were a lot of kind of twists along the way. So I'm curious if you went in knowing what was going to happen or if they surprised you as well. Uh, a lot of them surprised me as well. So common school of thought is that there are three types of writers in the world. There are plotters who plan out everything meticulously before they start writing. There are pantsers who just kind of make everything up as they go along. And then there are join the dotses, and they that's kind of what I am. So I will have key points of conflict or revelation or kind of set pieces that I know I am traveling towards, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get there or what's going to happen when I arrive. Uh, so with life, like I knew what one of the main twists were, but a lot of them occurred to me in the process of writing. I like to keep things as loose as I can because I figure if the characters do something that surprises me, mm -hmm the chances are good that it's going to surprise the reader as well. Like yeah. if I, the author, don't see it coming, chances are no one will see it coming. Okay. So I try and yeah, keep things as unplanned as possible while still having a rough idea of the general direction in which the story is going. Yeah. Is that a fun way to write as well? You find it exciting? Yeah. The yeah. The, be the best twists that I've thought of are ones that kind of occur to me on the spot. Oh, cool. And sometimes that requires going back and seeding that revelation. That's the fun part of writing for me when the story or the characters become so vivid in your head, they start doing things of their own volition. So there are a lot of references and Easter eggs 
that I found while reading Lifelike. And imagine there's so many more as well. Like some of the obvious ones were like Pinocchio with Cricket. Yep. There's a line from Wizard of Oz. Yep. There's a scene that was very much like Mad Max, and obviously with the blurb there. Sure. For those that are about to start reading the book, what are some fun references that you've kind of snuck in there that people can try and see if they can spot? Paradise Lost is one of them. It's a poem yep. by John Milton. Anastasia is another one, even though I haven't seen Anastasia. I'm like a Russian history buff. And the original version of this book that I started writing back in like 2010 mm. was actually going to be a steampunk novel that was set in post-revolutionary Russia. So it was oh, going to be like 1917 oh. and it was going to be a straight Anastasia riff. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I kind of put the idea away and came back to it many, many years later. And in the process of putting it in a drawer, it became something totally different. So we went yes. from <laughs> post-revolutionary Russia to post-collapse United yes, States. Yes, very interesting. <laughs> but yeah, uh, a few yeah. things remain from that. So mm -hmm. the Anastasia influence is apparent in the way the Monrova family is built. Mm -hmm. All the siblings have similar names to what the Romanovs had. About the only other thing to survive from that version was the name of the dog. Yep. Kaiser, because yep. he was named after Kaiser Wilhelm, the German head of state during World War One, and mm. everything else kind of changed. So, love yeah. it. So Eve, the main character, has some pretty epic companions. I found them really enjoyable to read about. Like they're witty, they're funny, they're loyal as well, and they can be incredibly sassy. The main two that I loved were Lemon Fresh and Cricket. So I got to know whose dialogue was the most fun to write. I mean, they both do different things. Yeah. Cricket is he's programmed to be Eve's conscience so mm -hmm. he is kind of a worrying <laughs> mother hen figure whereas lemon is more she's more of a buddy uh, mm -hmm. and their dialogue is a little more sassy i guess i think yeah. i think lemon like lemon is kind of the 15 year old female post-apocalyptic me yeah. there's a lot there's a lot of me in lemon i'm not sure what that says about me as a person but yeah uh she's she's actually a lot of fun to write and there's mm. i've written book two and handed it in a couple of months ago oh, uh and she plays a lot more of a prominent role in book two which Ooh. you will figure out why after you have read the, mm -hmm. the end of book one i can't mm -hmm. get super spoilery but yeah, yeah. lemon kind of steps up in terms of prominence in the story oh, in book two. And yeah, she's a lot of fun to write. Brilliant. Well, that kind of leads on to my last question, which is what else can we expect from book two? Obviously not going into spoiler territory. It's kind of the two towers of the series. So at the end of Fellowship of the Ring, the party gets split and everyone kind of goes off and does their separate things and discovers who they are and kind of steps up into a new role. Book two is a lot like that. Uh, so everyone is kind of faced with their own individual challenges and grow into the characters they need to be for book three. Mm -hmm. But ultimately the story is still about the friendship between Eve and Lemon. Their relationship is kind of the foundation of book one and the series as a whole and the way the world changes it, the way they see each other and the way they see the world because of their relationship with each other. Yeah. So yeah, I wanted to create a relationship that was platonic mm -hmm. uh, and could go any number of ways depending on what kind of pressures were exerted on it. So yeah. that's been a lot of fun to do. I'm glad that it was such a focus because it's like definitely one of my favorite things about the book. The friendship between yeah. Evie and Lemon? Yeah. 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 It was yeah. it was really fun to write mm. a relationship, yeah, that I got to study the way their relationship would change under the duress that I put it under, both in the events of book one and what happens afterwards, which I can't get into mm. with spoiler territory. Yeah. But yeah, it is a lot of fun to explore. Ooh, well, I'm sure we're all really looking forward to that. Now we're going to finish out with some rapid fire writing questions, kind of this or that questions. Okay. You ready? Yep. Edit as you go or fly through the first draft? Edit as I go. Day or night? Night. Public or private space? Private. Silence or writing music? Uh, I <clears throat> generally write to music nowadays, although I wear soundproof cans and there must be absolute silence except for the music. Like mm -hmm. if the dog barks or whatever, I lose my tiny mind. <laughs> Um, handwritten or typed? Typed. My writing is terrible. <laughs> my handwriting is terrible. My writing, you'd be the judge of that. <laughs> Alright, so that is all that I have for this Q&A. Thank you so much, Jay, for joining me today. Thanks for having me. And guys, if you haven't picked up Life Like already, it is available now in Australia, coming out in the States, May 29th. Yeah. And in the UK in July. I would recommend it. Read it. the last hour filming with Jay and now we're getting 
for the room ready. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna be talking about life like tonight with Jay here and a bunch of people that have read the book and we're looking forward to it. It'll be good. And we have Lemmingtons and Tim Tams. Yum. that I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I also have included a couple of links to some other videos. We have some vlogs and fun videos with Jay Kristoff and interviews um, from Jean from Happy Indulgence and Piera uh, from Piera Ford. They are the book club hosts up in Brisbane and they also uh, brought Jay along to their book club meeting up there. All of that will be linked down below. Go and check it out. I've also got the Goodreads link to Life Like in the description, which is an epic sci-fi book. Pick it up. Go check it out. Links below. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!